what else does she say? Um, she says at one point, this idea has never been tested scientifically. Why did she raise it then? You know, it's like, uh, why, 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 how, how is it? If it's completely anecdotal and uh, can't be backed up, then don't use that in an essay at all. Coffee stains and dog ears, yes. Um, oh, Sophia, thank you for being able to save our wet paper books. You're going to get inundated, possibly. <laughs> when I was young, I used to, I used to remember the page by folding over the corner. And then when I was a teenager, a teenager, I realised that was completely unacceptable. Uh, but now, as a secondhand book buyer, I don't mind having the little evidence that it's been read by people. Um, that people have made notes in the margins or folded over the corners. I quite like it. Um, more bookmarks. Yes, I love bookmarks too. Um, <laughs> yes, cats and books are natural enemies. Yes, I love secondhand books. You know, it's been fantastic that people have underwritten lines or written definitions or even responses or poems or, or drawn pictures. Um, I have a reproduction of, um, it's not here in my office, but otherwise I'll show you, a reproduction of Mary Shelley's original handwritten manuscript of Frankenstein, uh, which is an absolutely amazing present that my wife gave me. And in the margins are all little notes from Mary Shelley herself, you know, little pictures of trees and uh, little notes to herself. There are little numbers where she's added up. <laughs> where she's added up this, like the accounts for that week. So extraordinary. I'll try and remember to bring it in uh, to show you guys, uh, or I'll, maybe I'll post some pictures because it's, um, yeah, it's such a beautiful thing to have those little personal touches. Yes, and let's not even talk about burning books. Um, but, you know, it's such a horrible thought. <laughs> um, what else? Um, Tia says ebooks aren't social. You know, what about Goodreads and Book Talk and booktube maybe they didn't exist back then but you can loan books through amazon um you could, there are all sorts of ways to share ebooks uh yeah receipts and secondhand books and uh, concert tickets and things like that letters and stuff oh yeah and even old library books that still have the old library card in it you say you can see the names of the people who've read it yeah wonderful um uh, she says augmented content is peripheral to reading the story or what the words mean um, but, you know, you could call it a dictionary uh, augmented content, um, and that's not peripheral. That's absolutely critical to the reading of a book. Um, ah, I love the idea, Lachlan, of a Mr. Bean diary written from the perspective of Mr. Bean and with doodles and stuff. I think we'll look for that. That sounds absolutely great. That sounds really, really wonderful. Um, uh, and there are moments in Tia's article where I get a sense of, you know, cutting edge though she is, I uh, I feel that she's she's reaching a get off my lawn kind of uh, uh, posture when she says our lives have become ephemeral, invisible. I don't buy that at all. Um, and when she says that uh, paper books are nearer to our natural state, I don't buy that either. So. Um, if we're going to go back to a claim that as a uh, an argument for or against any kind of media, then we're back to telling stories by words and uh, and uh, severely limiting the way that um, stories can be transmitted. So, uh, so you know, I if you if you have read it, it's um, worth glancing over it to look for that kind of thing. Um, you know, I don't disagree with Tia. Um, uh, I, as I said, I think she's an absolutely fascinating speaker and and really. Interesting, if you're interested in what she has to say, look up other articles by her online. She's continued to have these conversations. Um, yeah, she's a remarkable thinker. But when you're writing your essay uh, at the end of this subject, um, bear all this in mind that when you're writing academically, um, that kind of thing is, is, is not the style we're looking for. So if you think about all the many different ways we can write and convey our arguments, don't copy to you. <laughs> uh, we're we're wanting something a little bit more, um, you know, objective, a little bit more reasoned, a little less emotional, and uh, 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 with with more adherence to kind of sequential logic and things that can be verified. So, when you're reading stuff, keep an eye out for that. Any questions or any other thoughts we haven't covered? Um, there's lots to. Uh, is there an exemplar? Yes, I will post exemplars. I haven't posted them yet, but I will. Uh, I'm making a note.
let's take a five minute break and then we'll uh, come back for what we're at. I was actually going to talk about this week, which was um, sort of um, a quest for points, like a uh, 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 choose your own adventure for for, um, for points across the, I don't know, industry campus or uh, hell, typos in my course materials. Um, <laughs> there's probably lots of ways we could do a quest for, for points. <coughs> maybe I'll consider that for next year or maybe for the next quiz. Um, <laughs> mm, I love the idea of rolling for points, but I don't think um, academically or in the university would allow me to do that. Let's take a five minute break. Um, we'll jump across to the other um, um, collaborate link. Um, once everybody had a chance to make a hot chocolate, go to Lou, etc. Um, I'll see you there very shortly. Cheers. And if you've got any questions, then I can ask, answer them then uh, in case anything occurs to you in the break. Cool. See you shortly. Uh, I absolutely love that story. It's um, completely extraordinary. I should have won all the awards. Uh, anyway, let's uh, uh, come back a little closer to home. It is fascinating to see uh, what everybody's reading. Lots of interesting books, old and new. It's great. Good to see you uh, reading so many diverse texts. It's absolutely fantastic. Obviously, we're more hours in the day to read stuff. So uh, we're going to quickly skim through um, some things this session. Um, uh, it says literary magazines, but we'll talk about a little bit more than that. Um, but we'll, that's where we'll start. Um, yeah, absolutely, Amy. Um, the accessibility of ebooks is just unparalleled at the moment. Secondhand books, ebooks, fantastic for students uh, and other people who can't afford stuff. Oh, there's, um, Work for the country again, uh, literary magazines. Um, I this is an old issue of Me Engine, it's about four years old, but I absolutely love this cover, it's so great. Um, it's so striking, a really good example of cover design. Who's heard of Me Engine? Anybody heard of this magazine? A few of you would have, Jade has, that's good. It's a literary magazine, one of Australia's um, uh, sort of flagship literary magazines. Um, uh, that has uh, it's been running for a long time. Um, it has an online presence as well as uh, its print presence. Um, print presence, yes, I said that right. Um, uh, and it's a, it's sort of one of the exemplars of what a literary magazine is in Australia and uh, and around the world. So, what makes a literary magazine a literary magazine? Um, there are lots of uh, different examples, lots of different definitions, but Wikipedia is always a good place to start. It's a periodical devoted to literature in a broad sense. So they're often called little, little literary magazines or little magazines. 
um, terms that are intended to contrast with larger commercial magazines like Weekly or Women's Weekly or uh, Men's Health and those kind of things, the glossies. So they have a very, very long history. Um, pardon my French, but Nouvelle de la République de Lettres is regarded as the first literary magazine. It was established in France in 1684. So it's uh, coming up on 440 years of history uh, of literary magazines. Um, it doesn't necessarily uh, define it. Uh, a, a literary magazine is a periodical that contains a mix of writing and writers, which can include short fiction and flash fiction, serialized novels, non-fiction, essays and memoir and so on, poetry, reviews, photography, art. So um, you can already see some points of difference between these kind of magazines and and your big commercial magazines. Uh, God, there are so many out there now. You just got to go to a supermarket and they're inundated with glossies and, and that's absolutely okay. They serve a place too. Um, but there's this long discussion. Oh, are there any journals, literary mags you recommend you keep an eye on? Uh, I think I recommend you read literary magazines. Um, uh, and it's worth looking at several until you find the ones that kind of suit you so i read uh, yeah empire times as isabel suggests is a literary magazine totally totally a literary magazine it ticks all these boxes here um there are a few out there and i would include uh, magazines like genre magazines too as well and we'll come back to that too so like uh, magazines that uh, focus on specific genres, but also be literary magazines as well as just sort of literature magazines, which is what most people think of uh, when the term literary uh, literary um, magazine is used. So this this has been a, a question: Is the the term literary magazine a problem? Uh, in that does it suggest that uh, a literary magazine is better than, say, a science fiction magazine? Um, is it a problem? Uh, I, I love this quote, um, this Lifted Brow. This is from the Lifted Brows, um, which is a literary magazine. Um, it's from its own uh, kind of publicity. The literary brow, Lifted Brow is a quarterly attack journal from Australia and the world. I, I love the idea of a publication being an assault or a confrontation, uh, a provocation, uh, an attack. And, and by the way, I forget who said the term attack semicolons in week one. Uh, but I've been using that. Yeah, semicolons all the time. Was it you, Blake, who said attack semicolons? Uh, fantastic. It was, Blake. I'm going to write that down because I don't have to credit you every time 